Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Forecast. Once again, this is your boy, here's Johnny. Here's Vaughn Chichi Ikari, I'm back. This is Ronnie James motherfucking Dio, star of the masquerade. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo, hey yo, y'all. Guess who's in the building one more time for one more week with these same old motherfuckers. That's all right, they cool anyway. Hey. It's your boy, Jimmy motherfucking Wayne. What's happening, y'all? What's happening? Boy, we got through that intro without even rehearsing, man. That's what's up. Let's give ourselves a round of applause for that shit. It's because AIDS is in here. I was going to say, yeah, AIDS is in here. Yeah, AIDS, it up. Oh, my goodness, man. Oh, you, you, would, man. you would think that we hadn't been doing this shit for two years. <laughs> <laughs> much as you struggle with this shit every week. That was sarcasm, people. <laughs> I think our audience knows my humor by now. What but, yeah. That? But so, we have an uh, audience? Really? People actually listen to these? <laughs> we got like 11, 12 views on every video, man. Woo, man. <laughs> exactly. That's where it's, I mean, that's where it starts. Yeah, I mean, and two of those ain't even me. But... <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't even watch them, so... Yeah, you know, I, actually, I have to admit, I, I went and listened to the last one because, well, I had been awake since 2 a.m. the previous uh, edition of, of Forecast, so I had to go back and listen to see what the fuck I had said. I've had those moments. like. And apparently we spent like five minutes talking about room temperature grapefruits. <laughs> He's like, define room temperature. <laughs> Oh, we spent far too long <laughs> room temperature grapefruit. I, I, I think we spent completely. just enough time. I, I, if if anything, we didn't spend enough time on room temperature grapefruits. <laughs> so we are all across the spectrum about how <laughs> exactly. we spent the whole fucking day. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, man. So what's been up with y'all? My fucking air conditioner is broken and it is oh, hot man. as shit. This is the wrong right. state and the wrong time of year to have a broken. Yeah. It's been broken since fucking Friday. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, you know how fucking hot it was this weekend? Like, yeah. shit, shit, like 112 degrees, something like that? Inside, probably. <laughs> and so came, they came on, they actually came in yesterday on Memorial Day, which I have to give the dude props for. That, alright, there's some circuit board's bad. I'm gonna have to go to the store tomorrow and get you a new one. So we went today, and they were out, so we had to order it. So it's not getting oh. fixed till Thursday or fucking Friday. Like, motherfucker, you better... At least it's supposed to fucking rain all day tomorrow. Yeah. I've yeah, got that's a week, I think, huh? I, hey. I think so. I think it's supposed to be... But I, I think oh. tomorrow it is supposed to rain literally all fucking day. I, I feel your pain, man. I've actually uh, I've had problems with my AC and my heater. Remember that really fucking cold day where it was like 13 degrees? Yeah, that's the day mm-hmm. my house went down. Oh well, you do remember it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It like, was thir- uh, no, actually it was 16 degrees outside when my house burned down. I, I take that back. This was the coldest week, and uh, where, where the roads were all iced over and shit. Guess whose heater went out that day, that week? Whatever. I, you know what? I can deal with the heater going out. I can get blankets and shit. I only have so many pieces of clothing to take off. Once you're naked, you're just dealing with the heat. Hey, man, mm-hmm. I let you, my power went out, too, and my pipe was free. Broke. So I had no water. I, all I had free was a blanket. Balling. <laughs> I was just... I was free balling. I don't think I moved for, that, for 36 hours. I was just on my couch, wrapped up in blanket, sitting there. there you know, I, I couldn't go nowhere. There wasn't shit to do. I was in the dark, so I was just sitting there. Well, that oh, sounds shit. uh yeah, shitty. Oh yeah, it was, it was good times, man. Good times. But yeah, I I, I do I feel your pain, man. That's uh it's rough not having heat or cool when you need it. Like I said, I could really deal with the heat, but I grew up in an age of air conditioning, and I'd like to fucking stay in it. <laughs> That's the thing. I feel the opposite. Most people can have a hard time with cold. I just I would rather it hot, man. No, I would rather yeah. it cold. I, I can put on as many layers of clothes, clothes yeah. Yeah, thank as you. I need to. I, mean, I gotta wrap my no, ass in a blanket and yeah. build a fucking igloo. I can warm yeah. up. Have you seen a, like like the just the symptoms that you have when you're cold, man? I just I, I can't get behind, man. Your nose is runny, your ears fucking hurt. Somebody yeah. you ever had somebody pluck you in the ears in the wintertime when it's cold, man? That'll no, start a fucking fight. The only person that ever did that got punched in the fucking face. Exactly. Oh, yeah. that, that'll, that'll start a fucking fight. I mean, I mean, niggas get disgusting. You just you 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 shivering. Your nose is running. Your nose is red. Your ears are red. You fucking coughing and sneezing and sniffling and shit. Nah, fuck all that, man. I would rather be hyped. Like, well, you're 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 wrong, Johnny. <laughs> Your opinion is incorrect. 
That's my opinion. Okay, well. That's really all I got for you. Hey, man, when it's hot outside, you know, people wear less clothes, which is usually a good thing. Well, sometimes it's a good thing. Johnny, you live in the not same city so. I do. You realize it's not a good thing. It ain't a good yeah, thing. Sometimes it's a good thing. <laughs> Don't, don't lie to yourself, sir. Hey, look, man, I like seeing the shorts working out. For every pair of, like, dukes and a tube top that I see on the right chick, you know, I will, I will take a shirtless fat dude. You know, I feel like that's a fair trade off. Yeah, but it's not a one to one ratio. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are correct. <laughs> but I, I have tunnel vision when it comes to that, so I, I choose to focus on the one girl and ass cutters as opposed to the three or four or ten fat men. Did you just refer to them as ass cutters? I just did refer to them as ass cutters. I don't know what the fuck an ass cutter is, thank you. I'm just making sure I heard you correctly. Ass cutters are when you got shorts on that are so short that uh, part of your cheek is hanging out. I don't need that. You mean booty shorts? Booty shorts is another terminology, yes, but I call them ass cutters because you got, like, basically, you got part of your ass hanging out, you got part of your ass in the shorts, and the shorts are usually a couple sizes too small. So what you get is that uh, that 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 almost double ass effect, if you will. Like those, uh, like those prostitutes in uh, Grand Theft Auto V. Yes, since you like the prostitutes in Grand Theft Auto V, this is a perfect yeah. example. Actually, I never played Grand Theft Auto Five. Do they wear ass? Oh. I'm like, hey, man, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm behind the times. The most well, it's time to end the podcast. John, John needs to go play Grand Theft Auto Five. Yep, I'll catch y'all next week. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I didn't like Grand Theft Auto Four. They, they, I didn't like what they did to the driving in Four. So uh, I never played Five. I started. I played Saints Row instead. I've never played any of the Grand Theft Auto games. I've uh, just kind of kind of flew under my radar. I've been playing fighting games and Dark Souls, and that's pretty much it. That takes up enough of my time. I ain't got no more time. Oh, and Batman. Arkham Arkham City, I think. So there was Asylum, there was City, there was Origins. Yeah, it was it. Now with Knights, which is going to be fucking awesome, because Rocksteady's got it again. Hi, bro. So I might ch- actually know because that's on the new console or something. Well, I'm going to get it on PC, so I, I don't really give a fuck what console it's on. I'm going to need to make it before I buy another console because they, they're getting out of hand with the cost. Of, you know, and I know it's just you know increasing with the times, but I, I, don't, I don't have $400 to invest in a console right now. Probably won't for a really long time. So I'm going to have to make Dark Souls and Soul Calibur work for me right now. Make it work? Yeah, it's, it's working, man. Dark Souls is a motherfucker. You guys teach you, man. He does a playthrough every once in a while. And oh, I, I've been playing Dark Souls two. That shit's well. It's so it's different than Dark Souls one. So it is it's fucking hard it again. Is. It is. It's different than Dark Souls one, but whereas I felt Dark Souls one was fair most of the time, Dark Souls two, you just get hit with shit like, oh well, I don't know how I didn't see that shit coming. Who said anything about fucking fair? Hey, it was fair, but who said anything about fucking fair? <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. There's a lot of invisible. Um, they um, did not. They did not advertise fair. You read about that? They just said prepare to die, and they were right. Well, did yeah. you prepare? It was the prepare to die edition. In fact, I, I thought I was prepared to die, but no, I was. Clearly, you weren't prepared. Prepared enough. I was prepared to die, but I wasn't prepared to die. Fifty-five. Goddamn times before I left the first area. Well, then clearly you weren't prepared properly. <laughs> Apparently, I needed more preparation today. Yeah. So yeah, man. Uh, okay. So who, anybody else got anything to add? Um. Anything that's happened in the last couple weeks since we did one of these? Well, your um, boy just got back from the NY. Okay. I had a fantastic fucking time. Really. I kind of caught a had... show, walked six fucking miles. My knees are still sore from that fucking walk, but hey, life is good, my friend. Welcome to New York. I wish I had the song queued up. Um, yeah. what, did you, what else did you do man. while you were there? Was it work or? <laughs> nah, man, I went for a college homie's wedding. Oh, okay. Nice. We made sure we pissed off the mother-in-law. Good. Good proper. As well, you... that's the only way to have a wedding. Right. And uh, we welcomed everybody else to the family. 
Bro. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Um, so what, what all you said you caught a show what show did you catch Phantom of the Opera oh yeah. that was the one you two were asking about yeah uh, uh, it was going to either be Patu or Abba and well I hadn't seen the, it the, the general consensus I got from the gallery was fuck Abba I'm like okay yeah mommy is not good because Abba's not good <laughs> Abba's not good at all they play that shit in my store Jesus. I, I don't know anything about it, other guys. Yeah, you don't need just, to. Just, you know what? You should keep it that way. Yeah, uh, just. Uh, I think I will. I think yeah, I will. Yeah. I like one or two of their songs, but the rest of them is. Uh, Tenchi, is this what? this the same man that likes J pop, so take that for what you will. Is it, Wait, you like J pop or K pop? Hey, he likes J pop. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That's about what. that. ABBA is the American version of J-pop. Is it? At least it's more J-rock than um, anything, though. ABBA was from Sweden. <laughs> ABBA was the Swedish version of J-pop. Just, I'm just throwing that out there. Hey, I don't know fuck, fuck all about ABBA. I just know they sing in English. They sing about Mama, Mama, Mama Mia. How can I... Wait, 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 is ABBA, ABBA the band and Arthur? Arthur. Arthur. Which, which Arthur? The, 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 the gopher. gopher. Uh, don't think so. I, I don't believe so. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I, I tried. I said I tried. Hey, you know, you know what? You made the effort, man. So, so you went up there. Y'all did do the? Uh, did y'all do the bachelor party? Did y'all do the the night out? Uh, shit? No, 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 no. no. His, his doctoral friends handled that for us, cause uh, the rest of us motherfuckers gotta work. We have <laughs> lives to attend to in the meantime. <laughs> Hey, so what did so, like, y'all, y'all kind of show and y'all? What, what all did y'all do? It was New York, what? man. I was there for three days. Okay. I spent two days completely occupied with wedding stuff, but it was an open bar, so I was happy. <laughs> right. And I spent the third day, a full day in New York, sightseeing, shopping, and a lot of walking and waiting on 3 a.m. planes. Once again, that 3 a.m. thing. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I, I, We've already had that conversation. See, like I said, I, I guess I got in about 2.55, so mm. I was technically in bed <laughs> before 3. Man, uh, now, you, before the three. older you get, the, the you can tell how old you are by context that 3 in the morning has, you know? <laughs> <laughs> When you in college, man, three AM ain't shit, man. I got yeah, I got a seven forty five. Like I got an eight o'clock class. I gotta be up at seven forty five. So I could party till about three fifteen AM and I'm good. And I'm gonna just get, get a good two hours on <laughs> shit, man. Boy, oh, back in school, boy, son. shit, man. Fuck <laughs> telling you, man, if, if if you if you hit, man, hit we, we play game. Halo we play oh. Halo until like like 5 a.m. and then we had to be up for like 6:30 one time. I remember that. Yeah, because hey, you were hanging out with fucking John. The rest of the niggas. Yeah, yeah. you went to bed and I was like, I was like, I went fucking with y'all, bed, man. <laughs> hey, we almost done, man. Shit to do. <laughs> and man, I had some of the. I know best. I went to bed somewhere between 11 and 2. Yeah, you did. I was, yeah, I was so it's, tired. It's, it's, it's motherfucking Wayne stayed up to two. Now this dude is in bed at like 9:30. PM every night. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like it shifts, you know. Back when I was in college, when I was college age, high school, I ain't have shit to do. I ain't have no responsibilities and shit. But I, I could go until three three a.m. I don't. That time does not exist for me anymore. No. Yeah. I don't know what happens at three a.m. no more. I don't want to know. I don't think I was ever really privy. I remember up at three a.m. It's because I'm like coming home from. The walls or something. Hey, if I'm ever up at 3 a.m., a room temperature grapefruit better be involved. That's all I'm saying. If, if I'm up, up at 3 a.m., I'm not. Hey, well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. All right. So, before we move on to the main part of the podcast, anybody got any new business? Anybody got any old business? Oh, we oh. got old business. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Ooh, do we have we old business? Fucking old business, son. All right, let's uh, let's let's move into the old business part before we get into topics. So what's up? All right, All right. who wants to lead off the old business for us? <laughs> would you like Would you like to start with motherfucking Christopher Columbus, or should I start with snack cake? 
All right, we're going to start with <laughs> what the fuck are Christopher Columbus, y'all. What the heck I, are y'all talking about? Well, go, 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 go watch last week's podcast, section, man. Yeah. If right, you well, recall last week, my man, Ronnie James motherfucking Dio, star of the masquerade, brought us a topic about the Santa Maria, was it? The Santa Maria. Santa Maria. The motherfuckers uh, found a goddamn Santa Maria. Are you serious? It wasn't the Nino. It was not the Pinto. Motherfucking Santa Maria. And well, we was chopping it up like we always do. And uh, we kind of casually mentioned that Chris Columbus was kind of an asshole. And mm-hmm. man, so here's Johnny ain't kind of believe us. No, <laughs> right. I've heard. I've heard he Or hey, this motherfucker I started a mission this week in the old business section, Johnny. Oh, shit. I would like to present to you oh, shit. a few facts on Christopher Columbus. Now, I tried to stick it to the facts. There's a lot of opinions out there about Chris. They usually are. Uh-huh. But here are just a handful of facts for you. All right. Yeah, oh, come on, man. God damn it. I haven't a... Look, I'm getting the link open, but uh, why don't you go ahead and kick us off? All right, I ain't talking about classrooms, rhymes. Fuck that. We 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 gonna start like men, and we are gonna start second paragraph in. Like many European explorers, Columbus encountered many indigenous people throughout his voyages. Singularly focused in his mission as riches and conquered lands, Columbus and his team treated the indigenous pro- the indigenous groups as they came across obstacles in their great mission. Uh, in 14, there are three. Oh shit! Turn that shit off. And who is that? That's you. It's whoever opened the link. There's a video involved in that shit. You gotta watch the video. That, and they be trying to educate motherfuckers. Fuck, vi- fuck, fuck video, man. man. Fuck video, man. We're, yeah, we old school, man. We like. All right. Let's the boss nigga theme but, song. <laughs> <laughs> but there are three main sources of controversy involving colonial interaction with the indigenous people labeled Indians. They use violence and slavery. They forced conversion of native people to Christianity and the introduction of host of new diseases that would have dramatic long-term effects on native people of the Americas. Historians have uncovered extensive evidence of the damage wreaked Columbus and his teams. Wreaked by Columbus and his teams. Alluding to an outcry over emphasis placed upon studying and celebrating him in schools and public celebrations. Uh, now, did you catch that, son? I got that. Okay. So, basically, the three main points of contention are slavery, mm-hmm. uh, forced conversion to Christianity, and infection of diseases. Now, that last Small part... Box blankets. Wait, they were doing that shit on purpose, then? Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. They, 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 they were the first, first bio-warfare motherfuckers, man. Well, they wasn't the first. They were just the first on this side of the ocean in a while. Right. Because we had pretty much had our diseases over here. Well, what the fuck am I talking about? I'm from over there somewhere. Just I'm going to start south. cherry picking some shit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Well, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's On his see. first day in the New World, day one, day he fucking ordered one. six of the natives to be seized, writing in his journal that he believed they would be good servants. Day one, took day, six slaves. Day down one. God damn. That nigga had been lost for three months. And day one was the first and thing day he one he sees land. People? Hey, go give me some brown people. That's what he said. Me, right? No, man. I said go give me some fucking brown people. God. Columbus later sent thousands of peaceful Taino from the island of Hispaniola to Spain to be sold. Most of them died en route. God damn, Chris, man. I don't know if I can sing about you anymore. Okay. Oh, wait, wait, there's more. There's more. No, oh, shit, well. <laughs> In addition to the controversy over enslavement and violent rule, the age of exploration Columbus led had additional consequences of bringing new diseases to the New World, which would, over time, devastate the native population. Because just because you're from Europe and you've got all the antibodies you need to survive the Black Plague doesn't mean they do. Well, yeah. Yeah, but... Were, were, were they intentionally like were they at war with these natives because it seems like I don't know if Columbus did that part on purpose but I do know that later on in history that was done on purpose small fact they really much on the whole thing but I mean it seems like they already had the overwhelming military advantage they did they did they didn't really need to well I don't know they only had one cannon on the motherfucker apparently okay well, when, 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 the fight, when, when you're <laughs> when fighting 
when you're fighting that's, why, with, that's why it's not they lost. No, when you're fighting an army of people with spears, one cannon is that's an overwhelming military advantage. What about a one cannon at the bottom of the Caribbean? That's a less overwhelming that is, advantage. That is less of an overwhelming. You're right. <laughs> And these motherfuckers didn't get sunk. They well, they didn't get sunk by any other ship or anything. They just hit a rock or some shit. They hit the coral reef. Oh, oh shit. shit! I didn't realize this. Eventually, his methods and actions caught up with Columbus. Settlers lobbied against him at Spanish court, accusing him of mismanagement. In 1500, the king and queen sent a royal administrator who detained Columbus and his brothers and shipped them home. <laughs> These are so things that don't necessarily teach are. you in school. The fucking queen of Spain is like, yeah, go get that motherfucker. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris still out there tripping? Hey, tell that motherfucker I want him here today. I don't care that it takes three months to get here today. And isn't it only like a six week voyage? If you don't get lost, uh, if you know where you're going, it's only like a six to, six to eight week voyage. And like. Fuck Fuck. I, don't I don't care. care. It's gonna take you six weeks to get there, and six weeks to get back. I want that motherfucker here today, son. <laughs> hey, look, man. Chris gets me a day off every once in a while, like once a year. Columbus Day. I get Columbus Day off too. Yeah. And I'm happy that I'm off on the day and all, but yeah. that doesn't mean I have to respect the man. I don't get Columbus Day off, so fuck him. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, hey, I'm, I'm with Jimmy. Hey, I don't get Martin Luther King Day off, so fuck that guy. <laughs> hey, no. Nah, you know hey, what? I'm saying that with you. You know what? Dude? Well, deal. Hey, man. You should, but that's, that's on y'all, man. <laughs> I, I don't. It, 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 it ain't my fault. Corporate don't believe in black people. That's fine. They're, they're from Alaska. Don't believe in black people. <laughs> they're from why Alaska. You, why are you guys saying saying guy. Why are you guys saying it like that? Wait, 2014. I just had a flashback to... Uh, I just had a flashback to Kanye West. Don't do that. Yeah, corporations don't believe in black people. Jimmy Wayne, hey, 14. If it's a corporation based in Alaska, they probably just never even seen a black person. They didn't realize okay, that part's probably right true. Oh, that's probably true. for a thing. That's probably Wait, true. Guys, I forgot to tell you something. What's up? I think I honestly met a person who had never seen a black person in their lives while Ooh. I was in Y, man. Did you Ooh. represent us well? Wait, how uh, the hell are you in New York City and never seen a black person? How in the fuck does that happen? Stay the grand of, hey, stay the grandmother of the bride <laughs> is straight up Norwegian. Hey. Oh. Like all Norwegian. Oh, all Apparently, right. Apparently, nobody about to tell you. the other side of the family that a black man was coming to the wedding and was actually going to be in the wedding until I was already there being picked up at the train station. Oh. oh, you know what, man? I uh, I honestly, so, I, I, I've, I've, I've often thought what I would do if I met somebody who had never seen a black person. How I would represent my race? Uh, that, dude, I wanted to trip out so hard. I wasn't gonna do us proud, no, y'all. I was, I was gonna be dirty and I was gonna be a nigga and I was just gonna be out there, son. And I was gonna have a good time with it. So I when I got on that plane at seven fifteen. I left the nigga at the house because I was going to see homies from college. I wasn't expecting that shit. I figured everybody had met a black man already, so I didn't need to bring one with me. Shit, I would have straight up, like, I would have talked like Mufasa the whole time. <laughs> 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 I would have been James Earl Jones and them motherfuckers. This is uh, CNN. Like, uh, so you've never seen a black person before. Jim, Jimmy, when you didn't get, uh, get a lion jacket. It's... Allow me to open your mind. <laughs> <laughs> and you should have got yourself. When you were in NYC, you probably could have found somebody who would rent you like a a, a traditional African headdress or some shit. <laughs> exactly. Right. Could right, learn you right. a quick rain dance. I would have just did that. I would have like this is this is just what my people wear to wedding. How <laughs> <laughs> okay, you be so culturally insensitive, bitch? <laughs> then you that shit ask yourself up. dancing. What? This is the good luck on your wedding dance. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, I realize right. it looks like twerking, but it's not. You need to respect my people. You need to stop being so so insensitive. <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah, I forgot to give y'all that would uh... Well, all right then. All right, Chris, so Christopher Columbus, asshole of the year, fourteen ninety two through fifteen hundred. 
There we go, baby. There we Eight go. Eight years consecutively. Eight years running. Asshole of the year. Impressive. So I think that closes old business on Christopher Columbus. That awesome does not asshole. close old business. I said on Christopher Columbus. Okay, so what other old business have you? I think we go on. All right, for those of you that may have listened last time, we had a section about a particular grapefruit. (laughs) Room temperature grapefruit, if you will. Right, right, right. And during this conversation about Uh citrus, Uh John John had decided to mention that... uh, you could, instead of a grapefruit, use a baked good of some sort, like a hostess cupcake. Uh, well, I have compiled a list. <laughs> I'm not even shitting you. Oh, my God. And I have them in viability for the grapefruiting method, and none of them are good for me. I'm done. You so, see what happened when you leave us alone, Tishy? You see what happened when you leave uh, us alone? So there's the list. And you know, see, you're not going to actually look at that article. You're just going to look at the very bottom because there's a list of snack cakes. Let me see. All right, let me see here. All right, all right. We're on the snack cake list. All right, at the very bottom. It should be in purple. Yeah, in purple. Bottom. Okay. All right, so. Oh, wow. I like the table, though, man. I like the table. All right, 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 right. I'm looking for this. The table. All right, so the Alpha Horror. Is a traditional confection found in some parts of Spain and Latin America. Really? Alpha whore? Co- <laughs> what, what nah, 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 the alpha whore ain't in South America. The alpha, alpha whore is like uh, on the side of Plank Road in Baton Rouge. That's <laughs> not... <laughs> you really think she can be considered alpha? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, you look that's, at that's, it. That's, that's, that's the black bitch, Some man. old world country that got like three million people in like two square blocks. <laughs> You're right. That would be the alpha whore. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do it, y'all. <laughs> Seriously. So, Man. alpha whore? All right. Talk to yeah. me about this chocolate dog. I wouldn't mind getting grapefruited by alpha right. whore. Just well, so the, so the, well, the alpha whore, though, it looks, I mean, if you look at the picture of it, uh, it, it looks like almost a a sweet burrito, but instead of a tortilla wrapping it, it's just covered in powdered sugar with, like, nuts and shit in the middle. That would not be good for the yeah. grapefruit method yeah. at all. Yeah, until, until, you said, until you said nuts, yeah, I was gonna go with it, because I look at the alpha whore, and I'm like, well, I suppose you could probably use that as some kind of a mix. Like nuts and grains and shit in there. You don't yeah, know what that is. Next up, we got the Chocodile, which Chocodile. is basically a chocolate-covered Twinkie. The pro- well, see, it's going to work better than a regular Twinkie because that chocolate is going to give it a bit of robustness. Uh-huh. But it's still, as soon as it warms up, it's going to get all over your hand, all over your penis, and it's just, it's not going to be positive. It's well, gonna yeah, it is. You have to look it off. See, that, that, this is where I'm going to have to disagree with it, you. It, she can still get a workout and get but her But the problem is, it's a method. The method, it, you will not be being grapefruit anymore. You will just be having chocolate licked off of your penis, which is not the grapefruiting method. But it that's okay. You know, but it may not be the grapefruit. We are trying to help out. Son. I will take. I will take it as a substitute in a heartbeat. You know what? Right. Now nah, she's gonna have to work a little bit harder because she won't be burning the calories. She won't have the vitamin C to activate her. <laughs> no, 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 no. You you actually gotta follow up the grapefruiting method. With the chocolate, you gotta treat the bitch after she finished. <laughs> Up next is the chocolate I, I pie. I thought I was treating her with my chocolate like while she was doing it. Which <laughs> looks almost like a moon pie, and that's just not gonna work. Like I don't like. The, I don't even like the sound of chocolate pie. There's there's hard crust in there and stuff, and you just Ooh, you don't man. want that anywhere near your dick. Oh, now, ding dongs, because of the way they're cream filled, you poke a hole in the middle. It might work all right. But I still don't think it's going to survive too many strokes because it's, it's not good. sturdy, man. It's not sturdy. It's just, it, 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 there's not. A, well, you'd obviously have to cut a hole, but no, it's it's not going to be. Now this list, little Debbie fudge rounds, and I'm just not even going to get into that because that's just a bad idea for a lot of reasons. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's a sandwich cookie, but goddamn it, yeah. <laughs> right. Now Gancito, it's a it's a Mexican or it's it's, it, that's, I guess, it's a Mexican snack cake with like strawberry jelly and cream filling and shit in it. Well, the, the problem with it is the size. I've actually eaten some Gancitos, and they're just not nearly large enough for even someone who is uh, less endowed. Let's say. Right. So right. That, that's just a size issue with those. Okay. Uh, right. Ho-Ho's, uh, it's, it's like a Swiss roll. It's just the, the configuration is not going to work for, for stroking a penis. Well, yeah, see, the thing is, Ho-Ho's, I think we actually... There's no picture of Ho-Ho's, man. It's a, no, but you know what a fucking Ho-Ho looks it's like. A, it's no, a, I don't. It's a, it's a it's fucking Swiss roll. It's you know a what a Swiss roll looks like? Is at the bottom of the page on the right. Just scroll all the way down, look under the purple, that's on the right. Is that a ho-ho? That's, no, that's a cupcake. That's not a ho-ho. That's, that's what I'm saying. That is a Hostess brand cupcake. 
Like we, had this this last... we had this conversation last week. Okay, well, see, that, that, before that, last, last before time before last. that hostess cupcake is what I was envisioning when I was making that comparison. Uh, see, a ho ho is a Swiss roll. You know what a uh, Swiss roll is, right? That's what a Swiss roll is. Okay. Same, same shit. All right, then there's the Hostess Cupcake. Like the Ding Dong, it would work all right for a couple of strokes, but it's going to break down really quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jaffa Cakes are a very bad idea because they have got like a snap, almost almost a ginger snap oh, texture oh, cookie, no. to, cookie on them. Yeah, you, you don't you don't want that anywhere near that. That's gonna scratch. Mm-hmm. It's just you know, even though they've got the the robustness, they'd actually probably survive the stroking. I don't think you want. To be I don't think scratch. you would. Would you survive the stroking? Yeah. Right. Would you survive it? Probably not. Uh, let's see. A May West. There's not a picture of it. I don't know what the shit it is. Moon pies, just like a choco pie. You got the, the crust in there that you just don't. That's it, just not a bad, not a good idea. Mm-hmm. Now the snowball. snowball. Hmm. Uh, I have to think the snowball might be the best choice because uh, it's got the cake in the middle, but then it's got that like full meringue on the outside that, that makes it sticky and gooey that gives it some and texture. It might actually give it. You might survive more strokes because that marshmallow shit. It would feel good on the inside, but you got you to deal with that purple coconut shit. But still, you cut I think a it hole. Would survive pretty well. Yeah, you you cut a hole in any of these snack cakes before you stick your dick in it. I mean, that just that's common I'll, sense, you know. Like, is it? Not, that, that's kind of, <laughs> is it? That's common knowledge. I mean, you know, just go, think it would clearly work worse than chocodiles because chocodiles, you've got the chocolate that's at least adding some some something to it. The, the Twinkie's just going to fall apart. I mean, before you, the penis is even inside the Twinkie. So it's, it's just a bad idea. A yodel just looks like a fucking uh, Swiss roll. So I don't know why it's listed in a, a second. It's a chocolate-covered Swiss roll. Swiss rolls are already chocolate-covered, aren't they? It's a double yes. chocolate-covered Swiss roll. All right, and then Zingers. Okay. Is never, zingers is a, size, is a size issue. Yeah, it's those are tiny. I've seen them. All right, so... If I recall last week, we said that, well, we ain't say shit. Johnny was in contention that many, many cake would be in contention for the grapefruit method. I stand by that statement. I'm, I'm down. I'm at one, son. Yeah. And that, even that one is one. has a tenuous hold on. How well is your coconut cream filling going to hold up in that oh. coconut cream filling? And I'm thinking not that much. <laughs> Yeah, this is okay. Well, okay. Apparently, they make butterscotch oh. zingers though, which sounds okay. Perhaps I shouldn't have said Little Debbie. Uh, obviously, <laughs> Little Debbie is not making her uh, her her snack cakes with. Oh, the with, thing with is, is Little Debbie and Hostess and Tasty Cake. It's all the same shit with a different label on it. They're oh. they are the same fucking size. Nah, but I'm thinking like Krispy Kreme or Mary Lee. You know, those are donuts, not snack cakes. <laughs> Donut snack cake is that really? No, those are not the, not same, the same thing. thing <laughs> oh man, I mean, I, I think this, they might as well be. You are coming at a fat kid about snack cakes. No, it's not. <laughs> you know nothing, John Snow. I know. <laughs> oh, you get okay. nothing, sir. Nothing. Okay, well, fair enough. I'm perhaps I like perhaps I misspoke. Perhaps I should have been more specific. Baked goods definitely have a place in the grapefruit and method. You can definitely, yeah, I mean, you would have to go to a bakery or something. You would have to go to Albertsons and hit up their bakery. But no, I'm pretty sure you could find an, any number of pa- cream filled pastries or fruit filled pastries that would hold up to the grapefruit and method. Oh, no doubt, nicer ones would. But you specifically mentioned <laughs> snack cake cakes. Okay, okay, you know what? Snack cakes has a specific implication. Okay, well, we're going to put this back in the old business section because I'm going to come up. I'm I'm going to do my (laughs) Sir, I will find snack cakes. uh, You know, snacks sold in in convenience stores for local. I'm going to go research snack cakes that would hold up to the great food method. I'm sure they're out there. I I wish you luck in that endeavor. (laughs) I'm going to go do my research. I'm going to do my whole be here. back at you. (laughs) <laughs> and then there's only one other piece of old business, Johnny. Mm-hmm. It turns out you were correct. I went and re-listened to the last podcast, uh-huh. and we did not say the correct next line to the Aretha Franklin song, Respect. Uh-huh. Okay, well, you know what? I accept your apology. So you do not, in fact, owe us $100. We accept- didn't say we were sorry. Sorry. Fuck you. Steal. I accept Fuck your- you. I accept- you do not owe us $100. I, I accept your apology. There we go. <laughs> well, that's odd. You're accepting something that wasn't that given. That doesn't exist. 
That means that's a that's thievery. And I will call the police. I am I I'm white. You man. are not. Who do you think the police are going to believe? And that's all the old business that I have written that, down. That concludes old business. All right. Well, uh, I guess we can move on to the main portion of the podcast. Please. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who aren't familiar with what we do here, basically what forecast consists of, uh, we catch up, we uh, we get together, we talk some bullshit, we figure out what's been going on, we cover old business, and then we move on to new business. See, this is a topical podcast, not like the cream. We hear that shit every week. It's not clever. You're not clever for thinking of that shit. So yeah, uh, as you well know, uh, being in my presence, being in any of our presence is a privilege. And uh, like, you know, like most privileges, they come at a price. So the price for participation in this particular podcast that I throw enough P words in there is a topic. So I hope preposterous. (laughs) Preposterous. (laughs) Yo, don't start. (laughs) Yeah, but uh, the price for participation in this podcast is a topic. So I hope everybody came prepared to pay the price. Oh, what you mean? I just can't use my old business section. You you technically could. That was enough of a topic, but uh, I figure you, you you'd like to go the extra mile, Jimmy Wayne. I just I just know you that well. I know you brought us another topic. You came bearing two topics tonight, right? You, you dirty motherfuckers. You luckily I only half dislike y'all. I'll take it. All right, so Jimmy motherfucking Wayne, you have the floor. What we got? Well, motherfuckers. I'm going to talk about motherfuckers doing it all wrong. Uh, I, know I, 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 I wanted to educate y'all on something, but the world of science, I, I, that wasn't going to happen tonight. That wasn't going to happen tonight. It, uh, but what I did <laughs> bring y'all tonight is uh, Middle East that are getting it wrong. Of course. Headline reads. The hell you say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, motherfuckers going to hell if they believe it. Pregnant Pakistani woman stoned to death by family. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> we still doing that? This is like. No, no, we aren't doing, doing no. that. No. Okay, we'll rephrase that. People are still doing that? Stoning pregnant women is what's had in 2014 in Pakistan, yeah. Mm hmm. Somebody who's better at words to mouth, read that for me. All right, I will take over for you. Uh, should I read the uh, the Lahore, tips? Pakistan? Huh? Lahore, Pakistan. Lahore, Pakistan, which is just an ironic name. <laughs> After talking about snack cakes. <laughs> a pregnant woman was stoned to death Tuesday by her own family outside a courthouse in outside the courthouse. God damn. So Real hard, not at all. The, the law was on their side. <laughs> Like, they couldn't even wait to get down the street from the courthouse? <laughs> nope. <laughs> hey, hey. All right, wait, wait. All right, we're good to stone her? All right, well, let's take her outside so we don't get any blood on the floor. But if we get any on the wall outside, we just take a hose to that and it'll be good. <laughs> Jesus, man. Outside a courthouse in the Pakistani city of Lahore for marrying the man she loved. Of that course. bitch. I know, right? The woman. How dare she find happiness? The woman was killed while on her way to court to contest an abduction case her family had filed against her husband. Okay. So she wasn't even in court. She hadn't made it to court yet. She was on her way to court and they said, ah, it's that bitch. Gotcha, bitch. Gotcha. <laughs> her, her father was promptly arrested on murder charges. So it was her father that stoned her. Mm-hmm. Police investigator Ranam Muhadid, Muhajid, Mujahid. Said, Bill <laughs> Witherson. <laughs> <laughs> Adding that police were working to apprehend all those who participated in this heinous crime. Yeah, because I was going to say, I don't think one man can properly stone somebody on their way to a courthouse. No, no. Oh, man. no. It's like, unless he's got a big ass bag of rocks and he can be <laughs> serious rapid throwing. Yeah, you got to be quick to stone somebody if you're just one person. It don't matter how many oh. rocks you get. Gonna wind that up. It's like, man, you, you better that that first one better count because they're gonna they're gonna take off, they're gonna run, they're gonna you know they're gonna start fighting you back. You're not gonna have time to get the backswing, really be able to get any power behind any more stones after that first thing. 
he who cast the first stone, that's the that's you know you got to sit that's that. That's the system. first thing it has you. Whoop. <laughs> that, that's, well, that's, to that's, be fair, that's, if you're gonna do the first one, you just make sure to get them good so they fall down, and then, right. then you'll have some time. Okay, right. well, yeah, I mean that first stone is important, though, you know. All right, so uh, arranged marriages are the norm among are the norm among conservative Pakistanis, and hundreds of women are murdered every year in so-called honor killings. I, Okay, honor killings, that's a thing in Pakistan. Mm-hmm. Carried out by husbands or relatives as punishment for alleged adultery or other illicit sexual behavior. Stonings in public settings, however, are extremely rare, and that's what the problem is here. They should have. They should have. <laughs> they got the fuck home. They should have. They should have handled family business in the family. They should. You know. Yeah. So okay. All right. That's that's the problem here. If they had done it at home, we wouldn't even be reading about it. We would not be. We did probably just, just never known. Sad part. Uh, Tuesday's attack took place in front of a crowd of onlookers in broad daylight. The courthouse is located on the main downtown thoroughfare. A police officer, Nassim Butt. <laughs> okay. Say what? What? Nassim Butt. <laughs> <laughs> Identified the slain woman as Farzana Parveen, age 25, and said she'd married Muhammad Iqbal, age 45, against her family's wishes after being engaged to him for five years. So clearly he abducted her. (laughs) Clearly, man. Absolutely. Her father, Muhammad Azim. You didn't see the chains? They were five-year-old chains. They were that rusted off. Well, yeah, they were attached to that ring she was wearing for five years, right? <laughs> okay. Her father filed an abduction case against Ibdal, Iqbal, I'm sorry, which the couple was contesting, said her lawyer. Mustafa Karal said she was three months pregnant. She was knocked up before she was married. Obviously, she's a whore and deserved the stoning. Nearly 20 members of Parveen's extended family, god damn. <laughs> Including her father and brothers had waited outside the building that houses the High Court of Lahore. Which, that's a funny... Okay, anyway, as the couple walked up the main gate, the relatives fired shots in the air and tried to snatch her from Iqbal, her lawyer said. When she resisted, her father, brothers, and other relatives started beating her, eventually pelting her with bricks from a nearby construction site. That's not even a stone, nigga. That's not a stone. You can't stone somebody. You can't stone somebody with a brick. That's bricking somebody. That's a completely different thing. Yeah, that's completely... You can't stone somebody with bricks. That's misuse of the terminology. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That's a bad use of construction materials, damn it. I don't know. I mean, you hit somebody with a brick, the brick's probably going to survive well enough for you to, you know, still build something with it. Who's going to let you build something with somebody you break somebody thick with? Well, in a, so you're thinking of it from the context of the United States. You know, in the United States, if some, if you throw bricks and you have bloody bricks that you use to brick somebody to death, yeah, we're probably going to throw those bricks away. We're, or those bricks are going to be in an evidence locker somewhere. But this is Pakistan. So those, hey, probably, bricks are still around. those bricks were probably washed off and still used in that construction site, whatever they were building. <laughs> Oh, no doubt. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, like, look, we, it, hey, man, it's, it's perfectly good brick, you know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I know I, it's a first-degree murder weapon, but still. Hey, man, it's still a good brick. Well, actually, right. I guess that's second-degree murder at that point. That's premeditated. Uh, no, first-degree is premeditated. Is first-degree premeditated? Yeah. Uh, look, premeditated is the only degree. way you get first-degree. Okay. Second-degree is a crime of passion. Uh, I thought it was the other way around. No, it's first degree is the worst degree of murder. First is the worst, second's the best. Okay, got it. Well, no, uh, like involuntary ma- manslaughter is the best. Well, I don't think there is the best in t- the context of murder, but you know, before let's not get into that. Iqbal said he started. Well, that's what we into, son. We're talking about murder here. We we, we making light of it and trying to make the least shitty out of a shitty situation, but uh, still about breaking motherfuckers to death. Well, stoning with bricks. Breaking. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Iqbal said he started seeing Parveen after the death of his first wife, with whom he had five children. Okay. We yeah. were in love, he told the Associated Press. 
He alleged that the woman's family wanted to fleece money from him before marrying her off, as you do. I simply took her to court and registered a marriage, infuriating the family, he said. Parveen's father surrendered after the attack and called his daughter, daughter's murder an honor killing, but said. I killed my daughter as she had insulted all of our family by marrying a man without our consent, and I have no regret over it. Well, so, okay, so we so basically we just need to give him some regret about this. Mm. Okay. Muhad Muhad Muhadid Mujadid Mujahid. The Mojo. Police, <laughs> the police investigator quoted the father as saying, Muhajid said the woman's body was handed over to her husband for burial. That's fucked up. So so Y'all gonna so, break a motherfucker to death and, and y'all then he give her husband the body. Yeah, I don't even got the decency to, to to bury your handiwork. You do what you have to. No, bullshit you do what you have to. No, they didn't they didn't do what they had to. I mean if you're gonna take the time to brick a woman to death, you might as well at least, you know, arrange the funeral or something. <laughs> at least it's the least you can do. Yeah. All right. I agree. The hum- the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan which apparently exists is a private group said in a really yeah human yeah. rights well not women's rights they're not people uh, what? <laughs> human rights I didn't say that folks a private group said well, of course a, you didn't <laughs> <laughs> said hey. in a report last month that some 869 women were murdered in honor killings in 2013 god damn that's a lot of women murdered that's... in honor killings I wonder how many of them were bricked as opposed to stoned. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm pretty sure in stonings, they just grab whatever's available. I'm, pr- I'm pretty sure they've been bricked, they've been uh, lumbered, they've been... <laughs> no, no, you can kill somebody with a 2 by 4 that is not stoning them. That's just old-fashioned beating them to death. There's a difference. Hey, you know what? I, clearly, the lines that's, blurred. That's a clubbing, not a stoning. Cl- clearly, the lines are blurred in Pakistan. We don't know what's what. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, but even but even Pakistanis who have tracked violence against women express shock at the brutal public nature of today. See, it seems like they're really focusing on the fact that it happened in public. They would have been okay had this not. But happened. that's because that's the only thing that matters in Pakistan, not the fact that she was murdered, but the fact that she was murdered in public. Come on, have some decent, have some decency. Take her in a in in, in the backyard behind the house. Yeah. <laughs> Honor killings, they're, they're, you know, they're, they're, sometimes you have to kill a bitch, but, I mean, don't do it in public. Come on. That was, that were children. Is that, is that what they're saying? Is that really the contention? Yes. Okay. I have not heard of any such case in which a woman was stoned to death, and the most shameful and worrying thing is that this woman was killed outside a courthouse. Oh, my God. A place of law. Jesus, so we animal? Is it OMG, exclamation point, exclamation point? Said Zia Wan, a prominent lawyer and human rights activist. He said Pakistanis who commit violence against women are often acquitted or handed light sentences because of poor police work and faulty prosecutions. Either the family does not pursue such cases or the police don't properly investigate. And as a result, the courts either award light sentences to the attackers or they are acquitted, he said. Well, I don't know if the family really could pursue in this case because the family are the ones that bricked her to death mm-hmm. I, I, I think um, I think the family needs to well, I'm sorry I think the husband or the whatever he was to her he wasn't were they, they weren't actually married yet she was on her way to, to the courthouse well, no they were married okay well I think the husband is within his rights to press charges but apparently there's some faulty police work coming on and you know, apparently going. in Pakistan that pressing charges doesn't mean shit if they all they did was brick a woman to death in broad daylight in front of a courthouse like, oh it sounds like it was an honor killing you know, that, that, that's legal that's good bro uh, yeah they, sh- they probably should have not done it in public but you know they probably should have waited until she got home and then beat her to <laughs> death with bricks but you know yeah, we can let that slide because right. she deserved it Obviously, she was a whore and she deserved it. Well, she was from Lahore. She was she was a whore from Lahore. Yes. Terrible. Yay, alliteration. It's not even alliteration. That's that's homonyms. <laughs> Is that homonyms? Straight up rhymes. I like rhymes too. Right. If that's what it is. <laughs> and it's not. I guess it's not technically a homonym because one is whore and the other is Lahore. Right. Okay. Fair enough. 
All right. So, who wants to after after that uplifting topic makes you know it makes us glad to be Americans? Um, who else has another topic? <laughs> I got one. Don't all run at once now. Tinchy D, you have the floor. Please grace us with the topic. All right. You better read these, though, so. I'm happy to. Am I, like, the only person that reads their own fucking article? Yes. (laughs) You are welcome to read mine, too. (laughs) Nah, Johnny always beats me to that one. Yeah, of course. Well, the one I wanted to talk about has already been taken, so. All right. A pregnant Pakistani woman? No. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, Jimmy Wayne, why'd you steal Tenchi's topic like that? <laughs> well, unless you wanted to talk about Christopher Columbus, in which case you could have just piggybacked on top of old business. Yep. <laughs> Boozy Florida woman allegedly tossed elderly mom out of wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> saying for Bro, 50, 50 years, years. Years. <laughs> look, wait look where it is though look where it is what state it's, is it it's, in it's where does stuff always go down it's, where does stuff always go down there's a reason there's a subreddit called Florida Man because there are so many police blotter posts with Florida Man did oh. something fucking retarded yeah <laughs> even, even Joke was like okay y'all crazy for real <laughs> All right, so Patricia T- Taverner, Taverner's 73-year-old mother was reportedly found by police after lying in a fetal position in the street. <laughs> after Friday's incident outside of Tavares restaurant, according to a police report, an intoxicated Florida woman out celebrating her 52nd birthday allegedly dumped her 73-year-old mother out of her wheelchair while telling her, for 52 years of shit. It's payback, bitch. You gotta say it. No, you gotta say it right. You gotta say drunk shit. You have to be to toss your own mother out of a fucking wheelchair. Not very. She just had to be giving you 52 years of shit. 52 years of shit. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry. For all of you out there that are children of abusive people or whatever, you only have a good excuse for the first 18. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They, you they are 52 believe. years old. You have had chances before now. To tell her off for 52 years of shit. No, you've had chances to tell her off, but it's not until they get really old and dependent on you that you have chance for real revenge. So she was biding her time. I think I see where she was going with this. I would like to state for all the social justice warriors out there, I am not victim blaming. I, hey. I just don't have time for that. Well, not. I mean, hey, look, she obviously she she had a game plan. She was staying the course. She's like, yeah, I can just walk away, but then she Ooh, won't learn. Long she won't time. learn anything. She, she's not gonna learn anything. No, I have to wait for my opportunity. I have to get revenge. That long? Revenge. Two years later. For <laughs> revenge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Patricia Tabernier's mother was found by police uh, by a police officer lying in a fetal position in the street after Friday's incident outside of Tavares. Re- okay, we just read that. A witness told police that they saw the elderly woman who she had been living. I'm sorry. Who said she had been living with Tabernier following hip surgery? Fall and hit the cement head first. Well, shit. Ouch. Yeah. Tavernier then went on to to fight and hit her sister with a camera. <laughs> she's, she's taking this out on the whole family. So she dumps her mom out the wheelchair, then whacks her sister with a camera. She kicked yeah. her dad in the junk or something? <laughs> <laughs> Breaking the lens, according to the restaurant employee's statement to the police. No, nah, she probably already killed him. Uh, he, he was out of the picture anyway. He wasn't around. So when the officer arrived, reported finding the women's the the women's women's elderly mother identified as Karen Jer- Judge injured in the street. Tavernier was arrested and charged with aggravated battery on a person over 65. Is that really a specification? <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, if you if you perform aggravated battery on a person under 65, it's not a felony. It's a misdemeanor. Really? really? I have no fucking idea. Well, I don't know. She was charged with misdemeanor battery for hitting her sister, who was apparently under 65, so maybe well, so. In Florida, it's like, we have to have stipulations here. Look. Well, we there are a lot of fucking old people There's in Florida. There's a lot of old people in Florida, man. A Look, lot of fucking That's retired. an old people regulation. We can't afford to properly prosecute everybody that assaults somebody under 65. And but over 65, well, those people fucking vote. So. <laughs> exactly. She was booked into the Lake County Jail before she was released Saturday on twenty, two, no, $20,500 bond. All right. Well, uh, the only thing I have to say to that is, Jerry, 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 <laughs> Jerry. 
I mean, that, 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 that is that is white trash, um, pretty much in a nutshell. No uh, faces. Trash, pretty much in a nutshell. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's just plain trash. Regard, I mean, yes, you she's gotta white, put a color on. Okay, you're right. Let's not put a color on it. That's, that's just straight trash. up human garbage. That that is trashy behavior all around. So now, did her mother have it coming? Probably. Probably. Still, it's possible. I mean, you put up with 52 years of somebody's shit, you might want to, you know, do something about it. But you don't have to dump her head first. I mean, you could. She's, yeah. in, a, she's in a wheelchair. There's lots of ways you could have gone about this. Just, just throw that bitch to the side. Fuck yeah, you could have just you could have just locked the brakes and walked away. Yeah, no, just put a broomstick in her spokes, just leave her in the restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot, lot of things she could do. You could go like, Pope, I'm sorry, what is it? I'm sorry. You could go full metal jacket. You could like hit her with a bag of oranges or some shit, so she doesn't. Sweet Valencia bruise. oranges. <laughs> exactly. So she doesn't bruise. You know, there's no evidence. That's right. <laughs> you won't leave a bruise, but still let them know who's boss. <laughs> oh hey, man. All right, just you can stop giving her medicine, whatever. You know, she had hip surgery. She can't really move that fast. What's she going to do about it? She's going to fall off the fucking chair. That's what she's going to do about it. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. But that dumping, exactly. dumping the chair first, you know, that's 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 overkill. See, she overplayed her hand. That's why that's why we're reading about this. Yeah. You know, people, bitches from Florida, they just have no restraint, you know. People from Florida apparently have no fucking restraint. That's what I said. Bitches you from- said bitches. I know, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> not everybody from Florida is a bitch. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I'm there are non bitches, I hear. I hear tells. You hear tells? They lie to you. It, uh, you I, probably I, heard it from one of the bitches from Florida, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I will await further evidence before <laughs> I contend that everybody. You know, okay. Yeah, why, why it's like the, the 10 people that listen to our podcast, one of them is from Florida, and we just fucking pissed them off and they unsubscribed. <laughs> We just lost the viewer. Don't man. care. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that's your I, fault. I am not Fucking a retail Florida. salesman. I don't give two shits. And yeah, hopefully I won't be for much longer. Anyway, who else got a topic? I've got a topic. Ronnie James motherfucking deal star of the masquerade has a topic for us. All right, what we got here? I will I'll read my read own fucking topic. Oh shit. Like a boss. <clears throat> well, I am boss. Oh, I did this one. All right. The title of the article is Pay Whoa. to Potty. What? Teacher's bathroom policy causes accidents and outrages parents. <laughs> what? <clears throat> serious right now. All right. A Vancouver, Washington school district has removed a teacher while the school investigates claims that students wet their pants due to that teacher's bathroom policy. <laughs> Third grade students, so third graders, motherfucking third graders, hey, at Mill Plain Elementary earn play money they can exchange for treats, K-I-R-O-T-V reported. The money can be used to buy things like popcorn or small toys, but it's also used as a bathroom pass. In two cases in the last week, children chose to spend money on treats instead of bathroom breaks and then wet themselves because they didn't have enough money for the trip to the restroom, according to their parents. It sounds like the, these kids had the same set of priorities I would have had in the third grade. It doesn't fucking mm-hmm. matter. When you're that young, you don't give a shit. Like, wait, wait. So you can either let me pee later, or I can get a candy bar. Yeah, give that's, me my motherfucking Snickers. Right, right. Like, like, that's that's what I would have done in the third grade. I agree. That's what I'm saying. They have the and same. Then again, problem. even in the third grade, I was told by my parents, I don't care what that fucking teacher says. You need to go take get a piss. Go take a out. piss. Yeah, that's also what my parents would have said. You just yeah. Whatever the repercussions are, that's fine. You don't piss your damn pants at school, because we don't want to come pick you up and bring you new ones. Right. <laughs> <laughs> An investigation began after KATU.com posted a story in which Jasmine al Ahiahida Jesus. <laughs> I, I, said, I, I, <laughs> al Ahida said her nine-year-old daughter, Reem, who names their nine-year-old Reem? Well, I guess you don't name a nine-year-old. They probably had that name for nine years or so, but wet herself in the class as a result of the pay-to-potty policy. I'm so <laughs> angry! Al- I told com. When a child has to pay money to use the bathroom, it's inhumane. That's a health issue. al Ayida, al Ayadi? Maybe that's al Ayadi. Whatever. All right, al Ayadi 
Well, oh, they, they forgot a letter, though. They're stretching uh, things now. They're, 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 anyway. Uh, said she didn't have a problem with the policies that teach students the value of money, but making students use it for bathroom breaks was outrageous. Which I agree. I don't have a problem with you having fake money in your classroom. You know, t- kid does good on a spelling test or is a good conduct or whatever. They can buy themselves some popcorn or a Snickers bar or some shit. But the second you make them use that to go take a piss, you have crossed a line. line. See, that's, the, that's yeah. the problem. I mean... Nine-year-olds in this country or eight-year-olds in third grade, eight-year-olds just have no ability to plan ahead. And that's what's wrong with this country, right. honestly. <laughs> wow. The inability of our eight-year-olds. Because throughout history, the you ability know they're gonna have to plan ahead has really been... Yeah, yeah we just, we just yeah, don't Because they make it all them important life decisions, right? <laughs> exactly. Am I going to pick my nose to my right or left hand? <laughs> you need to that think long-term. Term. Yeah. Yeah. Just eat it. You know, it's, it's important. <laughs> All right, let's see. This is a school, she says. It's not a jail. It's not a prison. We send our kids to school to learn and get a good education. Well, I bet, I bet they learn to hold on to some of their play money now. After the KTU.com report, second parent, Mershon Ortega. Jesus, man. This is like the most Mershon Ortega story I've ever heard. Mershon Ortega. 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 Mershon also had an accident in the same class on the same day. All right. Jesus. Once you're a teacher that has had one child piss themselves on one day, you let any other child that wants to go to the bathroom go to the fucking bathroom that day. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. According to the follow-up K2TU.com report, trips to the bathroom under the policy cost $50 in fake money. That's a lot of fake money to take a piss. That might sound like a lot of money, but you don't but know what yeah, like, we don't know how she's giving it out. You don't know the exchange rate on this fake money. You don't know me. <laughs> I mean, you know, is it a, it, you know, you get a hundred bucks for a good spelling test, or you know. I mean, a good spelling test might get you like ten thousand dollars in fake money. So I mean, maybe you, so. You never know. What kid is going to spend money to go to the bathroom? Merchon said, "No child should have to pay to use the restroom." Are you kidding me? That's absolutely insane. Yes, it is. Well, <clears throat> They're not paying real money. I mean, it doesn't matter. The you just because they didn't get a good fucking grade or they bought a damn Snickers bar should not prevent them from going to the bathroom. Well, well hey, they can go to the bathroom. I'm just saying, they're just gonna have to, you know, save set some money aside, you know, for bathroom breaks. That's that's really what they need. They need a they need a bathroom Roth IRA. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Evergreen School District spokeswoman Gail Spolar told KIRO that pay to potty is not a school policy. No, no shit. No fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> Teachers are left uh, are left to decide how to keep students accountable for bathroom breaks on their own. We're never going to prevent a child who's in an emergency situation from going to the bathroom, Spolar told k 2 ucom We don't want children to have accidents. We don't want children to have health and safety issues, and that's part of the investigation is how the procedure is being done. According to KETU, Ortega's daughter had the $50 needed to use the bathroom, but didn't want to spend it on a bathroom break. <laughs> Alayadi's daughter said she wanted That's to buy popcorn. That's an expensive-ass bathroom break, man. She wanted to buy popcorn like her friends and was told she couldn't use the bathroom if she didn't want to pay. She recognized she was being ripped the fuck off, man. That's why she didn't want to pay. It makes me feel kind of horrible in somebody else's pants and undies, and I just wanted to stay in my clothes. So I guess they didn't have extras, but somebody else did. After they pissed themselves. Mm. Both Alayadi and Ortega said they weren't notified about the accidents and only found out when their daughters came home in different oh. clothes. Okay, Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's kind of fucked up, right? You didn't even fucking call their parents and tell them, hey, little Johnny pissed himself. Honestly, or, they, they probably, you know, this of is. Of course not. Well, well, she made her decision. Ain't nobody got time for that. Obviously, popcorn was more important to her, so she's got to live with the de- decision she made. See, it's teaching him, this teacher has responsibility. Honestly, I think, you know, I think this teacher has the right idea, you know. <laughs> the teacher's been replaced with a substitute while the investigation is ongoing. Spolar refused to name the teacher or give specifics about how long the substitute stay would be. Both mothers want the policy stopped and action taken against the teacher. No shit. And that's about it. And then there's a bunch of comments. And, and half the comments are like, like teach kids, kids that people should pay to use the toilet. That's, that's the, the lesson. lesson. Okay, well, yeah, that is the lesson, but that's not that's not our accurate reflection of adult life. Those don't pay to use the uh, the toilet. No, no. You know what? If I have to take a piss at work, I I get, get up, up and go to work. I go I take a piss. piss. Exactly. Anytime, anywhere. I don't ask my boss, hey, you mind if I go take a piss? 
Right? I, I am not red from Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> hey, boss. Hey, I got to keep this. <laughs> like, well, that's going to cost you 50 Monopoly dollars. Oh, God. So, I mean, and you have enough gold stars. Well, so, so you well, need give to me ask, a bottle, I'll give you about 250 So you, you need to ask yourself, how bad do you need to piss? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, yeah. Uh, that, that, that is hard to fucking find. Huh? There you go. Pay the body. Some bullshit. Because you, you can't teach a fucking eight year old to not buy candy because they're going to need to piss later. Doesn't work that way. Hey, she had the fifty dollars. It's really her fault at that point. It's a rip off. She de- she decided that I don't know uh, what the exchange rate is. Fifty dollars to take a piss is extortion. Yes, it is. Hey, hey, look, man. She obviously decided that that popcorn was more important than dry pants, and you know, hey, fifty dollars for fucking <laughs> dry pants. Yeah, I brought extra pants, bitch. <laughs> I mean, like if they if they did just start preparing like that, well, obviously I'm not gonna be able to afford a bathroom break, so I just need to prepare, you know, just need to have to prepare something. Because uh, I'm, some, I'm, uh, I'm getting some fucking snacks, man. I don't give a fuck. Bring you some fucking pull ups or some shit. Man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right. So I guess it's time for me to introduce my topic. Something like that. So, yeah, a couple weeks ago, we covered uh, NBA franchise, no, I'm sorry, NBA team owners, uh, races outburst, and the backlash that followed. And we, uh, I think that was the, the week we decided it was a bad week to be a racist white man in America. Well, that week is over, and uh, Donald Sterling has uh, apparently found, uh, he, he suddenly got an infusion of testicular fortitude. He just said, you know what? I don't give a fuck what the media is reporting. I don't give a fuck what the NBA owner says. I ain't going absolutely any fucking where. I've been here since the start, and I'm gonna be here. So if you want to lawyer up, fuck it. Like he just like I just imagine Donald Sterling put out his cowboy hat, even though he's a Jewish old Jewish man. Put out his fucking mm-hmm. cowboy hat, just fucking just bowed up, just like took a stance and was like, fuck it. Let's no, no. What, see what he did is he whipped it out and laid it on the table. Exactly. That's what he did. I don't think you can find it anymore. <laughs> That's why he has um these... unless you buy it you mean his wallet. <laughs> that may well be what he whipped out and put on the table. I don't know, I mean V had to be there for some reason. Yeah, this would be that that's why I imagine V was there. And I still think it's funny that I'm referring to a person by an, a letter of the alphabet. That's all we were given, man. That, that is all we were given. That's all I still as as you know, to this day, I still refer to her as V. Stiviano. So check this shit out. God damn it! Why does this article keep closing? Fuck. Every time I'm about to. Sp- shit. All right. Los Angeles Clippers owner Donald Sterling says that the NBA is unfairly singling him, singling him out, and slamming him with a draconian punishment. Oh. Draconian. What is this? The Dark Ages? Right. In the privacy of his I didn't home. realize they were putting him in the fucking stocks. <laughs> yes, that's what they're doing. All prompted by the leak of a private conversation he claims was illegally recorded. Now, I'm pretty sure he told her she could record that, right? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He record. Well, she was recording because he it had to be. Well, that and the fact that he had a record, uh, had her recording him because he would forget things. He said, "Record all my conversations." Yeah. So. That sounds like consent to me. Anyway, sure does. In a scathing 32-page response, God damn, learn how to scale it back a little bit. You got to proof where you have to edit down. In a scathing 32-page response sent to the league Thursday and obtained by USA Today Sports, <laughs> Sterling says he will fight the league's move to force him to sell his team, and he noted that he has received offers of more than 2.5 billion for the franchise. But fuck that. This, this is about. There's no fucking way in hell That's the bullshit. Los Angeles Clippers are worth anywhere near 2.5 fucking billion dollars. Hey, hey, he received the offer, all right? <laughs> with, mm-hmm. Donald, with Donald Stur- he wrote 32 pages. Does this sound like a man who would lie about the. Yes. Uh, didn't we not talk about his fucking housing practices? We, don't we know? He didn't care if V. Stiviano fucked the dude. Just don't bring him to the game. Yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> that shit's embarrassing. Right. Uh, you can't be seen with them. You could fuck them if you want. I do all the time. <laughs> all right, anyway. Sterling says the league's proposed punishment would cause his family to, t- to take an egregious tax hit on the sale of the club. And regardless of his comments, Sterling says nothing he said violated his contractual agreements with the league. A jealous rant to a lover never intended to be published cannot offend the NBA rules, said the document signed by Sterling. I beg to disagree. <laughs> but mm-hmm. Yeah. So oh, oh, good times, man. Right. So there's they've they've got we've got the document linked here, we've got the sale linked here. We're not gonna really go into it, but basically Donald Ster what is it Donald yes, yeah, Donald Sterling, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Donald Sterling basically says, you know what? If y'all if y'all want to fight this out in court, we can fight it out in court. I ain't paying your fine. Fuck your fine. Fuck you. Fuck your mama. Like he just came out. He just went hardcore. He just went hard in the paint. I think we use uh, basketball terminology for this. Donald Sterling mm-hmm. just said, man, fuck the media. Fuck all y'all. Fuck you if you don't like me. Fuck Magic Johnson. Like apparently he just like he's been outspoken against Magic Johnson. I don't know why. What is what Donald? Yeah, like I'm sorry. I don't care how racist you are. If there's one black person you go like, he's Magic really Johnson. Fucking Magic Johnson. Hey, Donald Sterling. Uh, did Ray y'all hear that? Did y'all hear the other shit he said about Magic Johnson? Huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like they were interviewing him. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to look up what what uh, network this was. They were interviewing him. And uh, he pretty much is like, they were like, you know, they were asking him about his comments he made about Magic Johnson and the whole controversy. And he goes, yeah, you know, I never meant to offend anybody or anything, but... Um, well, fuck Magic Johnson. He's like, but Magic Johnson, you know, do I think he's done everything he can for black people? Not really. Not really. I think Magic could have been doing more. <laughs> I was like, uh, the, fuck, mm-hmm. the fucking balls, man, on this day. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's just, got balls. He's got fucking, shit for brains, but he's got balls. The sheer fucking <laughs> cojones it takes to even say that. At a time when he should be apologizing. I'd be like, the fuck did you just say? Yeah, Maggie Johnson ain't worried about it, but... <laughs> of course not. All right. I'm he responded once. In hell, that's anybody's that's actually going to buy that fucking franchise for two and a half billion dollars. It's value somewhere between eight hundred million and one point two billion. You, you, you're not gonna double Nobody's that. Nobody's getting 1. double 1. that. Two billion. No. Especially but if you're being forced to sell the motherfucker. Yeah. <clears throat> well, nah, your player is ready to walk out, and you coach. Obviously, ain't nobody forcing Donald Sterling to do anything, man. Donald Sterling's a he, he's a maverick, you know. Donald he's Sterling's a boss. A boss. I don't Sterling. No, see, Massa and Boss ate the same shit. So I know, and I will not give, I will not bestow Boss status on Donald Sterling. But fuck, fuck Donald Sterling. Well, yeah. Well, V. Stiviano did. No, uh, <laughs> indeed. And yeah, and she. Apparently, I don't know how without breaking the hip. And if that ain't, it, if that's not paying your dues, I don't know what is. That's true. Yeah. That's, that's taking one for the whole team. <laughs> that is taking one for the team. To be Apparently, fair, the way he was talking, she might have been taking one from the whole team. Apparently, he would have been cool with her taking one from the was. team. Just, you know, as long as... She, she, as long as it's the house, not at the she game. She was cute. Huh? I don't she, remember what she looked like. She was cute. She was a little bit plastic, but, you know, mm-hmm. she's attractive. She was L.A., man. Oh, yeah, basically. So, yeah... Do we want to go into the details of this topic, or do we just want to focus on the fact that Donald Sterling is just um, a rich and type of guy? Hard and not at all, huh? And he rolled hard and not at all. Yeah, basically. So yeah, um, one uh, one NBA player has actually been very outspoken on the whole Donald Sterling issue. Um, probably know Le- LeBron James the receding hairline, right? Nope. Yeah, LeBron uh, with the the, the guy uh, who just came straight out of high school and went into the NBA. I thought that was Kevin Garnett. Kobe Bryant. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. Shows you how much I know about the NBA. <laughs> yeah, before it was the policy that actually happened not all the time, but it was a fairly fairly often. It, it would at least have one or two a year. Yep. And now they have the one and done rule in college. <laughs> Okay, we'll talk about that later, but um, 
just gonna need some clarification. But yeah, LeBron. This is uh, what I have here is a video where LeBron just outright states, "Hey, look, Sterling doesn't belong in our league." And I'm gonna give you the exact quotes. Here we go. I'm just gonna play the video. Well, I think in this particular case, what we're fighting for, I don't think it could do anything to hurt our game. We're fighting to get an owner out of our league that shouldn't be a part of our league. And no matter how, how long was this clip, no matter how much, forty-four seconds. seconds. Okay. We need to get him out of here. He has a he doesn't belong in our league. And uh, you know, like I said, the next one is the owners of vote and, uh, and get him to, to sell the franchise. And, uh, obviously, it's not going to be as, as night and day. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be like that. And we just wake up tomorrow and the team is in someone else's hand. But, uh, you know, we need to get the, the next step going. can something that we just drag on. That wasn't exactly the quote I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, the quote that I was looking for, LeBron pretty much, uh, he, he stated this, his intent was to uh, not play for as long as Donald Sterling was an owner in the league. And uh, apparently he backed off on that offer. <laughs> to not play anywhere? Yeah, that's what he was saying. I wouldn't play in L.A. The Miami Heat. I mean, he's not Miami. against the Clippers. Okay, let me read the article. The Miami. Okay, the, the headline: LeBron James on Donald Sterling's removal. We need to get the next step going. The Miami Heat have been one of the most vocal franchises in the wake of Donald Sterling's lifetime ban from the league, and four-time MVP LeBron James has been at the forefront of the issue. James was one of the first players to commend NBA Commissioner Adam Silver for his punishment of Sterling, and the Miami Heat showed solidarity with the Clippers by wearing their warm-ups inside out before the start of the game. I'm sorry, before the start of game four against the Bobcats. What does what, what is it, that mean? They played the Bobcats in game four of the first they were wearing, playoffs. When they, go out, when they went out in their warm-ups, they wore their clothes inside out as a <laughs> protest. Okay. No logo. Ah, oh, okay, got it. Yeah, the logos are all on the outside. You turn it inside out, it's just a black shirt, basically. All right. Uh, Following team practice Wednesday, James addressed Sterling again, telling reporters that Sterling's removal from the league should be swift, and he wants to see the wheels turning soon. James pointed to Sterling's history as a reason the owners should band together. A three-fourths vote is required to force a sale of the team. And, uh, yeah, that that is apparently the wrong article. I was in a little bit of hurry when I was gathering this shit up. Apparently. I'm going to go back and uh, get the right article, and we'll revisit this in Old Business next week. All right, then. You bringing a lot of old business next week, man. What what other old business? Wait, wait, wait. Am I available We're, next week? Uh, snack cakes were involved in next week's old business. Your your turn with them. Actually, I think uh, snack cakes were involved would be a good title for this podcast with next week's podcast. <laughs> snack cakes. Oh. <No. laughs> yes. I am a fan of Crystal Columbus. Awesome asshole. Right. Well, that would be this week. Yeah. Well, this week should be, would Christopher Columbus have enslaved snack cakes had he found them on the West Indies? <laughs> the <is> obviously, yes. <laughs> Only if they were chocolate. Yes. Yeah. All right, well, um... Maybe ginger. Huh? Maybe ginger. Ginger? Oh. Yeah. Gingers don't have souls. You can't enslave something without a soul. <laughs> That's a song, by the way. I'm not even making that up, Dio. You just don't have souls? Did, did, yeah. Matt, did Matt Stone what? Trey Parker write this song? No. They just they just YouTube. Um, it was what well, was a YouTube of a kid, a ginger had put up. Okay, fair enough. Anybody got anything else? We I think we're uh, winding this one down. That's it. Yeah. That's right. Everybody has to go to deep in the fucking heat. Okay. Well, okay. y'all could crash the couch, but that's a longer ass drive. That's a long fucking drive to work in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Plus, I mean, if I wanted to, there's a guest house in the uh, guest room in the big house. I got a guest room. The bed is small, but the air conditioner works. Regardless, yep. this is your boy. J- Roddy James motherfucking Dio <laughs> Star of the Masquerade can I, can, I, can I start my outro? I mean, well shit yeah, Obviously not I was, I was start like, shit. Hey, look, I, 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 I was just trying to give people a chance You was trying to what? I was giving people a chance That's still not the outro 
Huh? What? You ain't outro a nigga. Yeah, motherfucker, can I talk? Well, obviously not. I can't, I can't hey, outro. Look, I can't outro if I can't, outro if I can't man. talk. Well, look, let me. How about how about you let me do my thing? How about you let this me do my thing? This is your mine? boy, Jim. Hey, nah, 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 this nah, is nah, Sponsor nah, J. Nah, Carr. Nah, nah, fuck all that. Hold up, hold up, hold up. This is Ronnie James' motherfucking deal. Star of the Masquerade. Peace out, y'all. Hey, you know what? Fuck all y'all. It don't end until I say it's over. It's not over. This is your boy here, is Johnny. Catch y'all next week. Good morning.